All right, guys, serious conversation. We have to talk about NEO and about the broader list of Chinese stocks listed on US exchanges. In our Discord, as well as in the YouTube comments, I've been getting a ton of questions about NEO. Am I in trouble? I'm overloaded on NEO. Most of my portfolio is on NEO. What's going to happen? In this video, I will give you my opinion on what's going on with NEO, what's going on with Chinese stocks in general why I generally don't invest in Chinese stocks, although I have dabbled in NEO, but I've also been an investor since it was $3, if you guys have been following this channel. I will answer the questions that I get the most. What happens to my options if NEO gets delisted? What happens to my stocks, my shares, if NEO gets delisted? So this episode is going to be filled with information with regards to NEO as well as Chinese stocks in general and what happens if and when these stocks do get delisted. Now, I'm talking about delisting because as of the time of this recording, DD, which is the ride-sharing stock, a Chinese stock that was listed on the US exchange, was delisted today. However, there's a lot of misinformation surrounding that. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so NEO is down 20% this week, 20% in one week. Now, normally this wouldn't be cause for concern, especially as the market is pulling back. That's a whole other subject that I did videos on. And it is now trading at major support levels that we saw back in March 2021 and May 2021. As I said, this normally wouldn't be cause for concern. However, the market landscape, in my view, as it relates to Chinese stocks specifically, has changed. Now, the pressure is actually not really coming from the US. So for those of you that are about to write a comment saying, you don't know shit, NEO actually is compliant with the accounting rules and with, and with the SEC rules and whatnot, I'm not talking about that the authority that is actually doing the delisting is China, not the US. The US is actually allowing Chinese companies, as long as they're not involved in any sort of security or military operations, right? They're allowing Chinese companies to be listed. They actually offer them a wide array of really loose regulations on how they can list in the US. But DD actually delisted themselves with pressure coming from the Chinese government. And the same can actually be done for other Chinese stocks. Yes, NEO included. Do not be a fanatic, don't be hyperbolic. Especially when it comes to investing, I always caution against being one of these you know, extremely biased, fanatical investors that works backwards from your conclusion, saying I love this stock or I love this company, and trying to justify every piece of bad news or negative news or even just stock price impacting news and jumping through all of these loops, doing all sorts of gymnastics and trying to pretzel your way into justifying what is actually going on with the company. The Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Samuelson back in 1970 during Meet the Press, he was asked a question about why one of his textbooks said a certain thing about inflation. He said that, you know, 5% inflation was acceptable. And then in a later version of his textbook said that, no, actually 2% is acceptable, 5% is too much. Well, he was questioned on why he changed his mind. He famously responded to the reporter and he said, well, when events change, I change my mind. What do you do? And that is the exact type of investor you need to be. You need to be quick on your feet. You need to be ready to change your mind and change your opinion. And even more importantly, make actual investment decisions based on new information in the market landscape. So DD listed its IPO on the US exchanges back in June of this year to much fanfare and hoopla only to delist now in December of 2021. And again, as I said, it wasn't the US that delisted them. DD delisted themselves from pressure from the Chinese government. Now here's why this is important and could apply to NEO as well as other Chinese stocks. If you actually look up NEO on your exchange, you will actually see that it says NEO Inc. ADR. Now you might have seen this before, mainly when trading foreign stocks, either we'll say ADR or ADS. Now the difference between ADR and ADS, I'm not gonna get into that because in general, what that means is you are really trading a certificate that represents the shares that are not in your home country. So NEO obviously trades out of China, right? That's where it is based. And so the shares are based in China. And what is what you're actually buying when you buy NEO or any other Chinese company that says ADR or ADS after its name, you're buying certificates that represent the shares. So you don't actually have ownership in the company. Now, I personally don't mind allocating a certain percentage of your portfolio as long as it's a managed risk 
to ADS or ADR shares. But with regards to China specifically, and in this case, NEO, because a lot of people who watch YouTube own NEO, NEO actually has an offshore company listed in the Cayman Islands, right? And this is part of a structure called VIE. A couple of YouTubers come to mind that, that have spoken about this before. I know Patrick Boyle is one of them. Uh, Tom Nash is another one of them. So credit to them for, you know, talking about this a, a long while ago. But this variable interest entity, this offshoot of NEO, this VIE, this, this phantom company that exists in the Caymans, when you're buying the shares, you're not actually buying shares of NEO and they really legally don't, don't owe you anything. Now, what's more important than this is that the VIE structure is actually illegal in China. And I don't think that that risk was initially priced into the stock price. I think that there was a period, especially during the Trump administration, when you know the, the Chinese-US relations were seen as improving, you know, we tended to sweep some of the, the Chinese regulation risks under the rug. However, lately, with regards to China's own regulations, they are acting in a very invasive method, even towards its own companies. I mean, we know what happened with Jack Ma, with Alibaba. Who knows what's next for companies like Neo? So, whereas before, I think that there was, you know, some tendency to sweep it under the rug and take that assumed risk, I don't think that the this risk is really implied in the stock price currently. And I think that, you know, what we're seeing this week with that 20% drop, I think now that risk is slowly being introduced into the stock price. Now, I know this video is going to get a lot of hate because I know a lot of people are over allocated to NEO. As I said before, yes, I've taken positions in NEO. I've actually been a buyer since it was $3. However, it is not most of my portfolio. I would never invest most of my portfolio in anything risky, Chinese or otherwise, right? Most of my portfolio is made up of NASDAQ, the S&P 500 based stocks. And for those of you that have been following this channel and that follow me on the Discord, this is no secret. I'm not making anything new up. And I have no doubt that the comment section will also be attacked by CCP bot farms. But honestly, I don't care because this channel has a responsibility to the viewers and that is to dish out the best information that I have currently and give you my take on it and you do what thou wilt with that information. So yeah, again, please keep in mind, from my standpoint, the risk is not on US regulation, although that is also ramping up. So now, you know, comp Chinese companies are being attacked from both ends, the US regulators as well as the Chinese regulators. But it is, the, the risk I think is more skewed towards what China can actually do because that VIE structure is currently illegal under China. And we've seen what China can quickly do when it wants to regulate something, especially as it relates to companies listed on US exchanges. All right, so what does that mean for NEO stock price? As I said, this level here would usually not be cause for concern, but with new information comes new opinions. And I don't think that you know, it's worth it to invest in NEO here. And I think that if you are looking to not take on this risk anymore, you can get out rather unscathed as long as obviously you didn't buy at the top in the 60s. Now, if you want to assume that risk, don't listen to me, don't listen to anybody else. Obviously assume the risk. Load up your portfolio on NEO if you want to. I mean, it's, it's your portfolio, it's your decision you know, you have your own risk tolerance. But even before this information, a company like NEO would not take up a significant portion of my portfolio. So could it be the case that China doesn't actually do anything and we see a bounce here from this historic support level? Yes, of course. NEO can even, you know, pop back up to 40 or $50. It's all about assuming the risk, right? So if you really wanted to, you can set a stop limit maybe, you know, at the $29 level. And if NEO drops further, then, then you can exit. But again, it, it, really the, the price action isn't the risk here. The risk is what the Chinese regulators can do with regards to these ADR uh, shares sponsored by VIE companies. All right, so what happens if you own the shares and a company gets delisted? Well, if a company gets delisted, a couple of things can happen. One, you can actually get cashed out by your exchange. So if a company like NEO gets delisted and say that the price of NEO at time of delisting was, I don't know, $15, then you would get cashed out at that price. What else can happen is if the company goes to what's called the pink sheet or the OTC market, the over-the-counter market, and it's no, no longer traded on the main exchange, well, then you can get pink sheet shares 
for the normal shares that you have. Now, what happens to your options if a company gets delisted? Well, what can actually happen is any options you hold, whether they are calls or puts, can just become worthless and they re they will retain no value. What else can happen if you own options on a delisted company is the options can now trade on a closing only basis, meaning you can only execute closed positions on your options. So really not an ideal scenario in any case if you own options on a delisted company. Anyway, this is not to spread FUD, this is not to scare you. Again, this is just to present you with information you can make up your own mind thereafter. In the private trading group, we saw the same thing happen with Lee Auto. We actually sold a call spread at the 3536 strikes. When we saw it hit this resistance, it has dropped 16% today. So we made 95% on this trade and closed it out. If you want access to all of our trades, analysis, watch lists, options, stocks, crypto, etc., you want to chat with the 4,000 beautiful and wonderful traders that we have in this group that are super active. Link is in the description below. Would love to have you. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this situation. And please, guys, this is not FUD. This is just information. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.